allergies. They're on the rise. A genetic predisposition could mean your family is at risk. You don't want to have to deal with the little one or two allergic to this, that, or the other. Since you can't send in for a different set of genes just yet, knowing which lifestyle factors protect and which ratchet up the risk is helpful. Motivated to help moms and dads make lifestyle choices, a team of Swedish researchers decided to look at what families living in two towns in Sweden could teach others about avoiding allergies. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we look at the lifestyles of the allergic. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. To kick off their investigations, they track down all the families with kids between the ages of 7 and 8 years old living in Karuna and Molendal, which is an area within Gothenburg. Each family was approached and asked to fill out a questionnaire. Was their little one allergic? What was life like in their household? That is, what did they eat? Who all was living in the house, etc.? 1,838 questionnaires were distributed and 1,029 returned and analyzed. For the record, a child was considered allergic if they suffered from asthma, from eczema, or rhinoconjunctivitis, that's red eyes and a runny nose, unrelated to a bout of flu. Quite a few children were allergic. Armed with this information, the team tried to see if there was any differences between allergic versus non-allergic families. To do this, they used fancy statistical analysis to look for patterns. Here is the PCA loading plot they generated. It shows how variables are related. Aish, it is rather complicated. Basically, variables located close together in the same quadrant are positively correlated, and variables located in diagonally opposite quadrants are negatively correlated. Here is the allergy variable in the right upper quadrant. The hand ish stands out as being negatively correlated along with smoking. Hand ish? What was that all about? Well, one of the questions the team had asked participants was how they typically washed their dishes. The team found when a family washed the dishes by hand, there was a lot less allergy. The difference was significant. That is, it was a real difference, not something that had happened by chance. To put some numbers on it, when they looked at eczema, the incidence of allergy in hand dishwashing families was 23%, but it jumped to 38% in families using a dishwashing machine. Now, Washing dishes by hand is not very fashionable in Sweden. Only 12% of the families were doing it. And you may be forgiven for thinking, What is wrong with these people? Who in their right mind washes dishes by hand? Well, it is a problem. The researchers concede. Hand washing families might be different in other ways. Ways that the survey was not able to see, although they did do their very best to eliminate this potential problem. It is what it is. Hand washing dishes seems to protect little ones from becoming allergic. It's actually not all that unexpected. Now there's no single cause or simple explanation for being allergic, but what is universally agreed on is that being exposed to bugs specifically early on in life, does seem to be protective. It's thought bored immune systems get up to mischief, and hand-washed dishes are dirtier. Uh, don't panic. They're not so full of germs that they're a potential health risk, but they're not quite as germ-free as a dish that has spent time in a dishwasher. You see, getting a dish clean depends on a couple of factors. How long the dish is cleaned for, how hot the water is, 
and the quality and type of detergent used. A dish in a dishwasher gets all three at optimal levels. A dish in the sink, not so much. Probably the biggest sticking point is the temperature. Hot water burns bugs and hands. Now, donning a pair of rubber gloves allows for hotter water and less wrinkles. Thank goodness. But a hand washed dish is unlikely to be sterile. It's never exposed to high enough temperatures. Now, who is who in your gut zoo matters. A decrease in bacterial diversity is associated with health troubles. There are lots of strategies that can be used to cultivate your microflora, some more doable than others. Washing your dishes the old-fashioned way, well, it's a lifestyle choice that can be applied by most people, and it might just help create better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who is worried about childhood allergies. Share this video with them so they can adopt this low-tech strategy and lower the odds of their little one being allergic. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.